All right, let's go now to this. Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene's crusade against House Speaker Mike Johnson, facing some pretty intense backlash from House Republicans. In her strongest threat yet against Johnson, Greene sent a letter to her Republican colleagues Tuesday, making a direct pitch for Johnson's removal. But several GOP lawmakers say they're frustrated with the chaos Greene is stoking and that they're not on her side. It's an impossible job. The Lord Jesus himself could not manage this conference. Or this kind, you just can't do it. I think Mike Johnson is a great human. He doesn't lie like the last guy. I think people don't like this dysfunction, uh, so that's not good for our side. And with a one seat majority, it doesn't only take a couple people to create dysfunction. I think Speaker Johnson is working his guts out, doing the best he can with a lot of feral cats. Feral cats. <laughs> uh, sure, Michael. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, uh, the, the, the House Speaker, uh, Mike Johnson, just did a new interview this morning. We're working on trying to turn some of that around. But basically, he said he tried to call Marjorie Taylor Greene. She basically wouldn't take his calls. Yeah. Um, and then he also criticized her as saying it was very dangerous to be throwing this around right now. Uh, and she hopes that uh, he hopes that she'll realize that in the end. I mean, I do significantly question why. I mean, why does she think I, this is a good idea? I, I, I don't know. I don't with, with a one seat majority. They're already likely going to lose the House. Democrats have an advantage. And this is brilliant political fodder for Democrats to be able to market in every single very tight, moderate Republican district to say, these folks can't govern. They're not doing any, anything to move the needle forward on immigration. They're not tackling uh, the Ukraine issue. They're, they're just not doing anything. People don't want that. I wish, Casey, I could get all the Republicans together on, on, on immigration, on reproductive rights, and on Congress and say, what in the heck are you guys doing? Because as a strategist, we're losing, we're ceding whatever advantage we potentially could have on any of these issues to our Democratic counterparts. This is nonsensical to me. So it sounds like we actually can show you what, what Mike Johnson had to say about his, I mean, I guess his view is pretty predictable since he'd like to keep his job. Still, here's what he said. Pulling a motion to vacate, removing the speaker right now, is exactly the opposite of what we need to show the country. We can't close the Congress down because that's what will happen. Sure. They will blame us, right? And so it won't hurt our chances of growing the majority or our party or President Trump's chances for his election because all of our fates in, in some sense are tied together. So it's, um, it's, it's really a, a very dangerous thing to be waving around a motion to vacate right now. Uh, when we've got to demonstrate that we can keep this country moving forward. Mm -hmm. and, and I hope that you realize that in the end. Uh, uh, and I think others are trying to make that case. So that's the current <laughs> House Speaker. Uh, yeah. David, let me show you what the former House Speaker, Kevin McCarthy, had to say about Mar Marjorie Taylor Greene recently. Watch this. And the one thing I've always found about Marjorie is she's a very serious legislator that deals with policy. And the best way to deal with anyone like that is sit down and talk to them. <laughs> David from. <laughs> okay, so Marjorie Taylor Greene is, is a licensed clown of American politics, but I don't think we should make She's her... She's not a very serious legislator? I don't think we should make her the center of the story. In order to keep his job, Speaker Johnson is willing to sell, sell out the cause of Ukraine. He is, this, we are marking now the sixth month, we are approaching the sixth month of, the, uh, of inaction by this House of Representatives on the President's October 20th request for aid to Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine, Ukraine, men in and women in combat are dying, Ukrainian cities are being destroyed, all because of Speaker Johnson's determination to keep his job by not allowing a vote that could be won if he would allow Republicans well, and Democrats to vote together. Because he's signaling that he is going to do it. I mean, she is focused on that and saying, I'm going to do this if you do that. Uh, this is, no, this, he, he doesn't have a Ukraine strategy. He has a save his job strategy. Okay. So he signals he's going to do it, and then he doesn't do it. It's six months, and people are dying, and a war is being lost, and cities are being destroyed. The, the, what, what he ought to do is say, uh, there is a majority in the House of Representatives for this bill. It will be made up of ab about half my Republican caucus and almost all the Democrats, and I am going to vote for the, the, I mean, the House of Representatives vote and not just a majority of the majority. But his determination to save his job is losing a war. And his job is not that important. He's not that important. And I don't think we should allow him to villainize Marjorie Taylor Greene when he is the main protagonist in the most shameful episode in American foreign policy in two generations. Absolutely agree with David on that. And, and to, for me, there's another, there's another story that's connected to this. And that has nothing to do with Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, per se. But it is the fact that Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s campaign, lead campaign person in New York, says they want a contingent election. They're not in it to win it. They want to throw it to the House of Representatives. And that's what we want. That's who we want to elect the president of the United States, a, a dysfunctional House of Representatives. 
I think that that's a big story that people need to pay attention to, that a vote for Robert F. Kennedy could put the vote for your, your vote for president of the United States with a dysfunctional House of Representatives. Well, that's a very interesting angle on the RFK story that we have not yet covered here that I will make sure that we do continue uh, to cover. Uh, sure, Michael, uh, to, to David's uh, point about Ukraine, I mean, it does seem like you know, the, the House Speaker has an incredible opportunity to yeah. be a savior for the West in many ways is how potentially you think about it. If you want to be a big figure on the world stage, that's not necessarily how you do it. No, mo most Americans to David point actually supports uh, supporting Ukraine. They understand that Russia is a villain that we have to defeat by any means necessary. I agree with David. Take the vote. Mar y y this idea of allowing one person to take the entire conference, the entire body hostage because of whatever ludicrous grievance they have is absurd to me. And I respect Mike Johnson. I know him personally, but he needs to take his tough stance and say, I am the speaker. If you don't like it, bring your ridiculous vote, and I'll do what I have to do to try to keep my job. Senator, what, what does the White House think of Johnson? Oh, I, you know, look, I wouldn't pretend to, to try to, to speak for the White House. Well, what do, what do folks that you talk to in this town, what do they view as his strengths, his weaknesses? Uh, well, I, I think the strength is, you know, that he is the Speaker of the House, but his weaknesses is that he doesn't know how to use the power. Mm -hmm. He is there and does not have a clue about how to use that gavel. And, and I, think, I think Democrats are always hold up Nancy Pelosi as the standard. For someone who understood the politics, who understood the, the, the gavel, who understood how to use the speakership, to do the right thing, or at least what she perceived, not everybody agreed with her, but she right. did think she moved things forward. And, and, and Mike Johnson seems paralyzed, completely out of his league when it comes to trying to exercise the gavel of the Speaker of the House of Representatives. Yeah. Dave, we've got 30 seconds in the show. You agree? Uh, yeah. Go to Hakeem Jeffries and say, from time to time, I'm going to need 25 votes. Um, I, I don't, don't, not on policy issues, but I'm going to need 25 votes. There must be something you want from me. Must be something you want Bingo. from me. Go. Fair enough. All right. Uh, thank you all very much for a great conversation uh, today. Really appreciate having you here at the table.